I think the one comparison that I'd like to make that reminds me of, of Tiger is, is Scotty's ability to make shots on the Sunday look like shots on the Thursday. And Tiger was so good at doing that too. In the high pressure leverage moments, he, did, he didn't lose a step. You know, he was still able to hit it pin high. He's still knocking down flag sticks. He doesn't miss hit it. Only on Sports Grid. You went to Alberta and, you know, came back with a lot of different stories. I know that sports betting as a possibility, uh, just like Ontario in 2022, we could see that. The other big topic was Alberta because sure enough, we've heard lots and we've talked about it on here that, you know, a law was passed uh, to allow the, the market to open up and we were kind of waiting to see what was going to happen. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Do you believe Diggs will come up big with Stroud or be the disappointment that he was with Allen in the last you know year? It's not all on Diggs as it was with the Bills. So he only needs to be a secondary piece. Remember now, he's in his 30s, Pharrell. He's in the back nine of his career. They don't need him to be super. They just need him to be, do a good job. Pharrell Coast to Coast, only on Sports Grid. Gosh, I'm trying to hold it right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson Effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. It was nice to at least walk down the last few holes, or at least the last hole, knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody, and, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. I think the one comparison that I'd like to make that reminds me of, of Tiger is, is Scotty's ability to make shots on the Sunday look like shots on the Thursday. And Tiger was so good at doing that too. In the high pressure leverage moments, he, di he didn't lose a step. You know, he was still able to hit it pin high. He's still knocking down flag sticks. He doesn't miss hit it. Only on Sports Grid. You went to Alberta and, you know, came back with a lot of different stories. I know that sports betting as a possibility, uh, just like Ontario in 2022, we could see that. The other big topic was Alberta because sure enough, we've heard lots and we've talked about it on here that, you know, a law was passed uh, to allow the, the market to open up and we were kind of waiting to see what was going to happen. Newswire, only on Sports Grid day where it might be a little bit tougher on these guys 
I got to ask you, Brady, too. That's a really good point. And like we talked about a lot of familiar faces. And this is a course where, you know, some of the old timers or guys that have done well here before, it kind of repeats itself. Like Jordan Speed, despite not playing well, he played like he had a million balls in the trees today. And he still got it to two under. And, you know, it sounds crazy, but like 10 back with three rounds to go with crazy weather. What do you think it's going to favor? Obviously, a guy like Zach Johnson, who's kind of like a semi-host, him and Steve Stricker have been the guys in this area hosting this tournament and doing well in this tournament. But what do you think about this? Like big ball hitters, kind of an advantage with this win situation. How do you think it's going to play out? And from a live betting perspective, we could probably take a couple guys like way down deep and get a good number if they weren't off to a brilliant start. I think that's how we can attack it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, 12 under is really not your true leader right now. Mm -hmm. I, I think the, the the true lead is probably about eight or nine under. We'll see how the afternoon finishes up. Who knows? Maybe there's going to be some guys that get to 10 or 11 or what have you. Obviously, the course, I think this is the easiest day of scoring we have. But Mr. Springer probably going to come back to the pack tomorrow, especially with the wind off of a 59. You know, I mean, that's just a ridiculous high. It's probably going to be followed up by a low. So, yeah, I mean, you're looking at a guy that, you know, shot two under par today, 10 shots off, quote unquote, the lead. But nah, not really. And and, you know, what's the low going to be tomorrow? How low are guys going to be able to go tomorrow? I think if you can shoot a five under tomorrow, that's, a, that's, that's a heck of a saying. score. That's right. exactly so what my if, number if you're was, at, five if or you're six. At, if you're at two now and you get mm -hmm. to seven going into the weekend, I think that's a pretty good position. Great call, Brady. I'm thinking the exact same thing. There's no 12 under, and it's amazing golf, too. Like, you look at these guys at the top, and we'll get to the baseball board, and there's a couple games coming up, Brady, a real dumpster special, too. You know I'm going to get involved with an Angels-Oakland game. That's what I do. Even on uh, the 4th of July, I'll look for some dumpster food here because uh, that's my type of game, and they're going off. And actually, like Oakland at minus 115 against the Angels, they've won a couple in a row, and the Angels are really uh, reverting back to themselves. But I got to tell you, in this golf, like, look at this leaderboard. Springer at 12. Harry Hall, take me to the chapel. Kevin Chapel, we haven't heard him in years. Buckley's mixture, it's awful, but it works. He's playing well. And my boy, Zach Johnson, I can expect him. But, Brady, what a crazy leaderboard. You're talking about pooches? This is unreal. Like, nobody predicted this. If you have a card with, like, some of these guys top five after the first round, good on you because these are guys that haven't been relevant in a really, really long time. Kind of an underdog start to the tournament. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got Chesson Hadley, Doug Gim, yep. Ekavaria, you know, who I think is an up and coming player, but he had really long odds coming in. I was looking at the board, you know, last night before I went to bed. I think he was in the neighborhood of 250, 300 to one to win this thing. Zach Blair, you know, always a value type play, but mm -hmm. you know, you know what that means. That means they don't win. That's why their odds are so juicy. Robbie Shelton, we haven't heard from him in a while. I have a feeling. But before this is over, Cam, th this is all going to sort itself out. And, and we're going to see the Davis Thompsons, and we're going to see the Sun JMs, and, and we're going to see the, the Seamus Powers. And, and, you know, a lot of the guys that you and I landed on and a lot of other people that are sharp in this, in this golf prognosticating business, the, these guys are going to get themselves to the top of the leaderboard. And eventually some of this flash in the pan stuff, I think, is going to fall by the wayside. I agree. Well, you're off to a great start. You know what, Brady? I'll give you a lot of credit with Davis Thompson, minus four right now. Like, he's doing great. Sepp Straka. But one guy, I guess, that can threaten, it's going to take a miracle to, to beat a 59. But right now, low man on course, the Finn, Sammy Valamaki. He's six under through yeah, 10 holes, yeah. T5. So he's making a really big run. If you got first-round leader tickets, he's not dead yet if he goes bananas on the back. Brady, we got baseball coming up. We cover everything here on the grid, and it's a great one, too. We got the Baltimore Orioles and the Seattle Mariners. Mr. Burns versus Miller. Uh, I don't like to lay juice, but I got Baltimore at a buck 40. I see this thing steaming to a buck 52 on one of my sites. Baltimore's just hot right now. I know Seattle's at home. I'll lay the juice with the Orioles in this spot, and I'm taking the A's against the Angels. What do you like in uh, Baltimore, Seattle? Maybe the under, low total of seven. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Seattle is just a dead under team, but I stayed away from this game entirely, Cam. Corbin Burns going for the Baltimore Orioles, very attractive there. But, mm -hmm. you know, 140 where you got it, that's a really nice price. I saw mm -hmm. closer to 150, and I was like, you know, it just feels a little expensive to lay that number on the road against a very good Seattle team who, by the way, is leading their division. You know, Seattle... It's been for like a decade that 
you know, it's like, oh, this is the year, you know, in the off mm-hmm. season or during the season. Oh, okay, Seattle, look out for Seattle. And they continually disappoint. They look pretty legit this year. Now the bats are not, you know, on fire by any means, but the pitching is awfully good. Mm -hmm. And that has been kind of the story for Seattle for many of these years when we thought they were finally going to threaten. But it feels like they're more of a legitimate threat this year. And you look at this division too. Obviously, Oakland is not very good. Yeah, they're on a nice run right now taking care of the Angels. Texas certainly not getting it done off of their championship run last year. The Astros had a red-hot June, but they seem to be behind the eight ball. We don't know if they're going to turn it around and be the usual Astros that we've seen for the last decade. Seattle's in a pretty good spot. Mm -hmm. But... I stayed off the game. I'm not going to argue with the Orioles. I love the Orioles. I can see them making noise in the postseason. Just didn't want to lay the price on the road. Yeah, sometimes you want to lay that juice. But, Brady, you know what? To me, I'm just like, it's a bet. It's the 4th of July, and I'm, that's who I am. I, I think they're going to win the <laughs> game right. with a better pitcher. That's I'm right. going to bet on it. We're going to break down the soccer card with our boy Julio, man. We got action everywhere. It's in-game live, July 4th edition. Coming back at you. trying to hold it in right now um the, the support's been overwhelming tickets for nashville this week are nearly sold out we are calling this the bryson effect <laughs> i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um what we're trying to do for for nashville and places all across the globe so super excited for the, the future of live at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody. And, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. Welcome back, everybody, in game live, 4th of July edition. Cam Stewart, Brady Cannon, and our next guest, the soccer whisperer. Hey, if it's got a soccer ball and a net, our man Julio, he actually does it all. The guy's bet, he bets women's hockey, he bets lacrosse, he bets, he's kind of like Gabe. If it moves, he'll bet on it, like Mo Sislak said in The Simpsons. Julio, how are you doing, buddy? Happy 4th of July. I hope you're ripping it up. Hope you got a barbecue. Brady says he's getting the meats on the grill after the show. How are you doing today? How are the bets going? Cam, I'm doing well. Brady, I'm doing well. Happy Independence Day. I know you guys are on satellite radio, so cheers to the truckers working across the U.S. today and in North America. Hope the Canadians had a great Canada Day, and I hope the Americans are having a good Independence Day. I I got some spare ribs, so I just took out the membrane, Cam. So we're getting ready for a nice nice Independence Day ribs, corn on the cob. Uh, I'm I'm a little little pissed off at Stefano Tsitsipas. I bet him in the fifth, in the uh, fourth set to go over ten and a half games, and that guy folded quicker than a uh, a paper chair. So, yeah, like our boy Casper Rude. 
Thanks for nothing yeah, exactly. in that six-game yeah, parlay. It's like, nothing. what are you doing, exactly. dude? You're losing that match to, was it, Fognini or whatever? I'm like, come on, bro. Like, help us out here. It's it's, it's the 4th of July. We need money. We need food. But I'll tell you, that guy really – that's the thing about Julio. Like, before we get into soccer, these, like, can't-miss parlays, especially in today's gambling world. Don't you, too, agree, Brady? Like, there's always something that trips you up. It's never easy. Oh, it's a lock. It's a lock. Like, I'm going to be away from that. Like, these public parlays now, like, I have to write this on the list. Stop doing these, trying to get – plus money with like five or six <laughs> favorites in tennis. It doesn't work, Julio. There's always a problem. Yeah, especially with this crop of tennis stars, right, where you think they're, you think they're going to take ascend to that superstar role and they just stay at the good to very good level, especially like a guy like C.T. Pass. He's going to stay at that very good level till he retires. Well, Julio, let's talk about, we got, before we get into the Euro, we got Copa action tonight and Gabe and I discussed it on the show. Brady was a guest on our show, and uh, it's kind of an interesting matchup. Like, people are just saying, you know, I get it. Argentina has stars. They have Messi. But, you know, some of their games haven't been that easy. They beat Canada 2-0. They've been grinding out. Ecuador is kind of a dangerous side. How are you approaching this game? Um, obviously, Argentina should win this game. Parlay material. But I'm looking on the Asian spread. Ecuador's getting one. And maybe the one and a half with a little bit more juice. How are you attacking this game? And by no stretch, Argentina is the favorite, but I don't think they're a lock, my friend. Well, if you look at these South American sides, they're bitter rivals. It's South America, you'll get that rare two to three goal victory. I think the last time Argentina won by more than two goals against Ecuador, you got to go back to uh, 21 in the Copa America playoff when they won 3 0. 2019, they won six to one in a friendly. So traditionally, it's either one nil, two to one, one one. So if you can find a book that's giving you one and a half, plug your nose, take the juice, and take that one and a half. But even at one, you got to read the house rules. If it's at one and you get the push, I'm willing to mm -hmm. take that with Ecuador. I, I see it being a one score affair. Uh, you, you're looking at the markets right now. I'm seeing twos posted at, at more of uh, your sharper sports books. Some of the soft mark, some of the softer ones are offering you two and a half with some pulp on that on the uh, on the under. So uh, I see this being a one score game. I like Argentina, but I'm not willing to take them on the handicap or on the money line. It's just too pricey. So for me, it's Ecuador, Ecuador, Ecuador. That's the side for me. Julio, what, what about the prop market? And you know how it is in the NBA, the NFL, all the stars are right up there for the, the taking. You know, you've got how many passing yards is Patrick Mahomes going to have? How many three-pointers is LeBron James going to hit? And oftentimes, the best practice betting-wise is to go against, you know, bet on the no and the under against these big-time stars because the numbers are usually inflated. In, this, in the case here for this soccer game, we've got Lionel Messi. And if you look at, you know, how many shots is he going to take on target outside the box? Is it one or more minus 270? That seems like it'll probably cash. If you think it's going to be two or more, you get plus 180. Is there a no bet in there? Is there a fade of Messi somewhere in there that you like? Messi's typically, when he's with Argentina, more of a distributor than he is a goal scorer. I mean, if you're, you're looking at Lorento Martinez, anytime goal scorer plus 162, that's uh, whets my appetite a bit. Uh, Julian Alvarez, who plays for Manchester City, plus 200 to score anytime. I really like that price. I, I would almost take unders for Messi when it comes to shots on goal. That's that's something, because Ecuador is going to be focusing on him. They, they, they always usually do Messi, Messi, Messi. So I, I would lean more under, especially if you're getting like one and a half or, or more on the twos with the shots on goal. And, and look at more of the, uh, the undercard for Argentina. Alvarez, Martinez, um, Fernandez, Gonzalez. I'd look at those uh, nice prices for any time goal scorer or shots. Look at Alvarez for first goal scorer, Julio. He's got a boost on my book, uh, plus 500. That's pretty good price. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Alvarez or Mar Martinez. Martinez, plus 375 at one shop here in Colorado. I'd be, I'd be more than willing to take that. Martinez has scored, I believe, three goals in the Copa America thus far. So that's that's more of the, the sort of the players I'm looking at in terms of the props. I'm Julio, telling you guys, what about the total? 
Go ahead. Go ahead, mm-hmm. Cam. No, no, I was going to say the same thing. I'm just like, I'm just looking at Ecuador and win, win, draw, win, loss. Like, it's just one of those things. It's like name value, Brady. Like, I see, to Julio's point, like, the, dr- the draw, Julio. Like, yeah, I was going to say, like, first of all, Julio, like, total in this game, do you think we can get there? And the draw is almost three to one. Wouldn't like, you know what I mean? Is that something you could play? I think I'm going to play the draw and hopefully maybe Argentina will probably win an extra time or kicks. I mean, I, I'm leaning towards the draw. That's what I'm going to play. If yep. Personally, I'm willing to lay that price. I think I would price two and a half at about minus 200. So if I can find something below that $2 mark, I'm playing under two and a half goals. The draw is is very, very tempting, Cam. It's just dependent on can Ecuador find the back of the net. If they can, I mean, I'm almost willing to lay it in-game, especially if Argentina can score first. Mm -hmm. You said this thing goes right to, like, after after injury time and regulate, it goes right to kicks? There's no, not like the Euro where we're sitting there all night? No, no (laughs) extra time, yeah. It goes straight to penalty. Oh, good. We got got time to go to our barbecue then. More with Julio. We got to talk about Canada and Venezuela, too. trying to hold it in right now um the, the support's been overwhelming tickets for nashville this week are nearly sold out we are calling this the bryson effect <laughs> i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um what we're trying to do for for nashville and places all across the globe so super excited for the, the future of live walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done it's never safe but um, very proud of everybody and, and of course Tiro I mean what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did uh, it was absolutely incredible so I couldn't be happier for him Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. Welcome back, everybody. Cam Stewart, Brady Cannon, our guest, Julio, our friend from Colorado, betting on soccer, hopefully winning money on soccer. And Julio, great conversation in the break. Brady and I are talking. You know what? And in today's world, you deal with a lot of different people. Oh, it's got to be a dog. It's got to be plus. And I, I, hey, we all love plus, especially golf bettors, right? Brady, we're the worst. Oh, that's, I'm not going to bet him at 14 to 1. I think we can get like 7, 16, 17. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we do. We're always looking for more. But when it comes to soccer, Julio, in this game, and I think you brought up a great point. If you're looking at the dog, you don't mind laying 85 cents or 90 cents with Ecuador to get two goals in this game. And they know what? And they lose by one, you win the bet. So sometimes, and Brady brought up the point about boxing, sometimes a favorite can be value or a different line like that because you're thinking it's going to be a one goal game. I'll lay the damn juice. Yeah, so it's Ecuador, Argentina. Ecuador plus two goals on the Asian handicap is minus 188. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it should be priced at two dollars or higher. Agreed. Uh, it, especially if I look at the at the recent history, 
South American teams, very bitter. Argentina, Brazil always have uh, – those are games that everyone wants to play play hard against. Argentina think their, their, their stuff doesn't stink, and Brazil is uh, samba on the pitch, right? So, again, I see this more as a one-score game, 2-1, to 1-0. One, one, so at minus 188, personally, I'm willing to lay that price. Some bettors may not like that price. It just depends on what you perceive that value to be. And for me, I, I'm pricing it at $2. So if I'm getting minus 188, I'm jumping like a cannonball into the pool. A, a great explanation there, Julio. You know, just when people say value, it does not always mean that it's a plus price. Uh, you know, I said Floyd Mayweather at minus 400 was incredible value. It's like if you go to the store and, and you see the steak uh, is, is selling for $10 and you think it should be selling for 20 then the $10 is value. <laughs> you have to look at it that That's way. It doesn't matter if it's sold, a minus Brady. sign. There you go. It doesn't matter if it's a minus <laughs> sign or a plus sign. Yeah. It's just what is the value there? All right, let's move to the rest of the weekend here. We have a couple of matches on Friday, Julio. Uh, in the Euro Cup, I want to get your opinion on. You've got Spain and Germany and then also Portugal versus France. Uh, we've seen the underdog kind of take some action here in both cases. Uh, anything on your plate that you like in either of these matches set for Friday? Boy, Brady, I am I am higher than uh, mm. most people in Colorado are when it comes to <laughs> Portugal. I'm a I'm a big big fan of this Portuguese side. Mm. I have futures on Portugal. I was with Cam the other night on Sports Rage with Gabe. I see this game going into extra time, and if it does, mm. there's so much value on Portugal. I mean, if you're if, if if you're one of those guys who has a big bankroll and you're an arbitrage better, just take. Both sides, France, Portugal, plus value in 90 minutes and in penalties because there's so much value. Portugal to win in penalties, 14 to 1, plus 1,400. That's where I'm going. I'm also going to take the under. We're seeing twos pop up at a lot of shops. So under two and a half in Portugal, uh, France. And I think both teams score in Spain, Germany. I think that's going to be a nice up and down type of game where France, Portugal could be like watching paint dry. It's going to be a very cagey type of affair. So both teams to score, Espana and Deutschland, and uh, under two and a half goals, France, Portugal, with Portugal winning in penalties plus 1,400. we got about under two minutes left, Julio. England, Switzerland, any opinions in the rest of uh... – the Copa card, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Canada, Venezuela. Can't wait for that game. Everybody in Canada is absolutely jacked. And we got good ones, too. Colombia and Panama, that's a great game. And you got Uruguay and Brazil, two heavyweights, man. You must be in heaven, Julio. You talked about getting high in Colorado. You're on a soccer high right now. You can't get enough. Who needs baseball when you have entertaining <laughs> soccer to watch? I tell you what, Cam. <laughs> Switzerland, plus one. I've been fading England on the handicap. All Euros, I will continue to do that. Switzerland, plus one. And I've even taken Switzerland to qualify at uh, plus 131. And then in the Copas, I like Canada. Canada to beat uh, to beat Venezuela. I consider that a toss-up. So give me Canada in 90 minutes at plus value, Cam. It's a lot Julio, of value. Just what? about 30 seconds left here. I, I want to ask you before we have to get rid of you. In the Euro Cup, is there an outright future? that you have your eye on at this point. You've got Spain and England as the favorite at almost four to one, France at about four and a half, Germany almost five to one. Anybody has a future outright to win the whole thing that you have your eye on right now? Portugal at plus 900 at one book here in Colorado mm. is very enticing. I just, to me, England's not the favorite. Spain at four to one is very good. Um, so if you like a dog, Portugal at nine to one. If you like a favorite, Spain at, at plus 400. Love you, Julio. Enjoy the 4th of July, buddy. Smoke one, make some money, and we'll talk to you soon, brother. Cheers, guys. Thank you. <laughs>
The support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson Effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. So at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody. And, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible. So I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. Welcome back, everybody. End game live, 4th of July edition. We got lots of friends and on the program, Brady. And Jeff's a baseball guy, but he said, who the hell is this Jerry Springer guy on the golf course? I'm like, I know, he's killing me and Brady too. Hayden Springer, you're killing us. Anyway, what are you going to do? He shoots a 59. We got to give him some love. And welcome to the show, Jeff Dawson. Jeff, thanks for coming on the program, buddy. How's the, the baseball card, the betting card, everything treating you today? How's 4th of July going? Fourth of July from Cape Cod, Mass is doing great. And by coming on the show, I got to, you know, get out of the beach a little early. So that's a blessing. So nice. thank you guys there. Uh, uh, a little uh, bad luck, I guess. Uh, we had uh, the Twins, first five minus the hook. And we had their team total over four and a half. And then once you avoid that game, it's uh, thanks for playing after seven and the deluge that came in. So hopefully uh, the four o'clock games and the nightcaps will be a lot better. But uh, one and one, we're okay with it. Well, I, I wanted to ask you about those four o'clock games, four o'clock out here on the West Coast, 720 Eastern time, my San Francisco Giants for a rubber match there in mm. hot Atlanta with the Atlanta Braves. And, you know, I, I go back, I'm kind of old school on this handicap here, Jeff. Charlie Morton, you know, this guy has traditionally in a Braves uniform been very good at home and he's more of a bet against on the road. And also here you have Charlie Morton in the role at home as a short favorite. I think you're getting a little bit of a price because on the other side, you've got the Giants ace in Logan Webb. I give the edge to Morton at a shorter price than maybe you would usually get with the better baseball team at home. How do you see this one, San Francisco and Atlanta in the rubber match? You talk about value. The gentleman that was just on before you had a lot of great points in the soccer about value. When do you get the Braves at home at such a price? I'm wearing the orange. Maybe it was fluke. I, I like this Giants team. They're pesky. They start slow, but they just keep coming and coming and coming. A bunch of no-name guys for the most part. Uh, uh, they got their ace on the mound, Logan Webb. Uh, uh, I actually lean... Giants here. I like them first five. I also like them to get their team total over. But Brady, I understand exactly what you're saying here. You're going to give me the Braves at home on 4th of July at a near pick them. I guess that's where the actual value would be for most people, Brady. I got to ask you, Jeff, this Kansas City Royals team, uh, you know, I know they went through just a little bit, uh, you know, like they didn't win some games and then they're back and they're just, they're just grinding. They're totally overachieving. I really like them. Like I'm from Toronto with Blue Jays and you know what? I find myself, I'm like, screw the Blue Jays. All they do is screw me and my money. I like Kansas City and you saw what Waka's done. Can you believe this guy? His last seven starts, two earned runs are under. 
and he was a gem. He was absolutely fantastic. Eight Ks last night, but tonight could be a different story. Short price with the Rays and Eflin. Marsh is a little bit of a gas can. Does Tampa Bay offer value tonight? I'm looking. I think that price is a little bit short, despite the Royals being a very good home team. Two nights ago, we read the market real, real well. We had Tampa Bay uh, to win the game, full game, and we had their team total to get over four and a half at about a plus 115. Yesterday, Kansas City bounces back in a close score and affair. This Tampa Bay Rays offense has been anemic. But when Vegas is telling me that it's four and a half, I'm going to go back to two days ago. I think they have the pitching edge with Eflin here. I like them full game tonight. I got them in a, around minus 119. And I'm going to follow the lead that Vegas gave me two nights ago. I'm going to take Tampa team total over the four and a half. I think they get to five or better. And I think both teams might put some runs up on the board. I think we're looking at right now an eight and a half juiced over. Love it. So in, in my eyes, first one to five wins, I think it's Tampa Bay tonight. Jeff, I, I want to go to a game that just got underway. They are now in the top of the second inning, and the Baltimore Orioles do have a runner on second with one down in a scoreless affair at Seattle with the Mariners. This has been a very good series between two very good ball clubs. And I think there's been a lot of disagreement on who's the right side today with the Baltimore Orioles and Corbin Burns on the hill. You've got, I believe Gilbert went yesterday. I can't remember another one of their great pitchers for Seattle going today. Miller, maybe if I recall, Seattle's really been a dead under team. I know some people like that play anything in game. I mean, there's no score on the board yet. Any direction or a, or a side that you liked prior to first pitch between the Orioles and the Mariners today? On paper, I mean, everything is on Baltimore. The offense, the pitching today with Corbin Burns, the Seattle team, as you said, at home, dead under. No Julio. I know no Julio. I like to say no A Rod, no Ken Griffey Jr., no Jay Buna. This offense is anemic. And, and yet, they lose the first two games to the Orioles. Here comes Corbin Burns. I'm almost thinking, I, I'm dead contrarian on this. I did have uh, Seattle first five uh, at plus 123. I said, if you don't like that, you want to spend a little money uh, and get Seattle plus a half run, minus 115. I, I just maybe show some pride here. I know Baltimore's the better team. We talked about this Astro team's three games back. Uh, we have a ticket on the Astros to win the division. I think Seattle, as good as their pitching is, I just offensively challenged right now. So I went contrarian today, Brady. First five with Seattle plus the 123. I also took them plus a half run, minus 115. I think Seattle gets it done in the full game as well. Jeff, it sounds like your crew wants you to get the 4th of July party started early, man. They're ready to rock. <laughs> Fire up that damn grill. Hey, we got to... Brady knows they call me the garbage man here at Sports Grid. Like, I like real loser games, and this one uh, fits the bill. Actually, Milwaukee's a pretty good team. Milwaukee's pretty good, but Colorado, Quantrill's actually not, you know, he's a pretty decent pitcher. What do you think about this one? Milwaukee, Colorado at Coors. Hey, if it's on the board, we can bet on it. You see any edges in this one? We got, uh, hey, right, Brady? It's minus 145 for the Brewers, total 10 and a half. Any opinions, Jeff? Uh, the Brewers got me good last night. We had the team total over six and a half. Uh, we had that two nights ago as well as they got to seven, but lost the game. But it didn't matter. We got to seven there. Uh, you think of Coors Field, you think of 12, 13, 14 under overs. Uh, last night, I think Brewers three and three nothing shut out there. Uh, Colorado's offense has just been hit or miss. And, and Brewers can score, but they can also pitch here as well. They're offering us a, a 10 and a half juice under Kim. It's almost like, as Dave Sharapin would say, don't rush to the window. We got a window right here for you. So I'll <laughs> stick to what Vegas is saying. I'm going to take the under 10 and a half. If you want to get in there, uh, Milwaukee minus a half run first five. So you don't have to lay the big juice. That's where my eyes are right now. Well, we got yeah, a couple I, other I'm later games. You. I like that. I like that pick. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with you there, Jeff, because I, I'm just looking at this. I'm going, 10 and a half at Coors Field seems so low, mm -hmm. but you're right. There is a reason they put it up there like that, isn't there? No Russian, no Russian. We'll open up another line for you. It's okay.
<laughs> what about the Dodgers and the D-backs? What's the deal here? Like, I got to give Arizona credit. They give the Dodgers fits. What, what do we got? Knack going tonight? Well, the Dodgers got a knack of playing, uh, taking a lead and giving it right back to the Snakes. And we got uh, gallons of fun going for the Snakes, plus 112 Dodgers, minus 132, total eight and a half. What do you say, Jeff? What do you think about those pesky snakes? I was on last night uh, with Scott and Dave, and he asked me about Arizona. And the night before, Arizona had the game and Dodgers came back. We liked uh, Arizona last night. Big dog, and they were able to, I think, put up 12. I, when you see Zach Gallen on the mound, you don't see opposing team totals usually at four and a half. And so I like the Dodgers at a bounce back spot. My overnight number was minus 140. Now at 124, I'm going to get cute here, Cam and uh, Brady. I'm going to take their team total over the four and a half at plus 110. So I'm getting plus money on the Dodgers. And we're going to get jiggy with it here. We're going to go yes. Will Smith over the one and a half total bases. I like him there. And I think in the home run prop, you can get him at around plus three, up 380 right there. So we're getting jiggy with Will Smith tonight, boys. Will Smith oh, on the Independence fresh, Day. The Way to Prince go. of Bel Air. Let's go, Jeff. <laughs> Rip it up, buddy. Enjoy the holiday, man. <laughs>
Last night we were on the Angels team total over four and a half, and Estes just mowed them down. And, and I was actually expecting a bounce back here, but again, they've been shut out for another three innings. So right there, nine and three is twelve innings. Uh, I don't know what they did the day before. I, I'm still leaning the Angels here. I I, I think they're going to find a way. Um, I I call these guys the the pesky Oakland A's. They remind me of the Orioles from a couple years ago as they started to build this juggernaut that they have. So in game, I still think the Angels will get this done full game. And I, I you know everyone's expecting Baltimore Seattle under. I mean it's just been a cash cow. So. I mean, Corbin Burns spinning them right now, but I still lean that Seattle team. I think they're going to find a way today, Cam. Well, a good opportunity to take that Seattle team right now in the live market if you are so inclined. Yeah, let's look some big picture here, Jeff, while we have you for a few more minutes. And and I want to hone in on the National League East. You know, it's really become a fascinating division year in and year out. It always seems like it's a battle between the Mets, the Phillies, and the Atlanta Braves. And, you know, every now and then you see Washington flash or, or, you know, whatever, but it looks like it'll probably be the big three once again. The Mets have really turned their season around. It looks like the Braves were going to be dead in the water when Acuna gets injured, but they've gotten a little bit hotter as of late. And it coincides with a a period of time here where Philly's a little banged up injury-wise, and they've been slipping a little bit. What does your crystal ball say about how this is going to pan out in the National League East? I could not have been so wrong here. In the orange, I was. I had this picture, Biff's Almanac. I'm going to say for the San Francisco <laughs> Giants. Okay, love uh, it. Here, the Mets were were done. They were dead and buried. Uh, Alonzo on a contract year, and Diaz just needs a change of scenery. I think he had blown three of the last four games, and the Mets were a million games below 500. So, the Giants were that team who were the runner-up for Shoei Atani, were the runner-up for Judge, even though they offered him $50 million. So I'm like, the Mets fire sale, come on over. The Giants need a first baseman. There's Alonzo, and they could use someone in the back end to help them to the Bridges. Well, in come this Mets team that since Grimace threw out the first pitch, they're the, <laughs> you know, the miracle Mets here. And, and so I did a show earlier this week, and I, uh, I think you can get the Mets at like plus 230 or 240 to make the playoffs. And I think that's a hell of a play right now. I think the Mets are that team right now. They're they're firing on all cylinders. The Phillies are banged up. They're waiting to get to the all-star break. No Bryce Harper, no Schwarber. They're usually a second half team. And I think they, they put all their eggs in the start of this season. So, Go now to the Braves. The Braves had their great run without Acuna uh, a couple years ago. Now they have no Acuna. They have no Strider. How far is Sale going to take them? Uh, How far is Freed going to take them? I expect the Braves to be active, and I expect the Mets to stand put, and they have a checkbook that's endless like the Dodgers. So I like the Braves, and I like the Mets in the second half there, and I like the Phillies to slide back to the pack. I agree with that. I got to tell you, Jeff, um, I had this team at the start of the year and not going great, but they're actually coming on. They beat the Yankees today and maybe just a bet to make the playoffs. What do you think about the Cincinnati Reds? I'm actually looking at this team going, they should be a hell of a lot better. I I, I like this team. And, and you know what? Now you're starting to see the bats are coming alive. The pitching's been a little bit better than expected. I expect the Reds to make a huge push in the second half. What's your opinion on uh, the big red machine? Uh, Ellie De La Cruz. I mean, every time I say his name, I smile. I, there's such uh-huh. a fun team to watch. Hey, I grew up in 75 with the big red machine. Okay. So I've always been a Reds fan. I think they got a great young lineup. What's their problem? They just need some consistency in their pitching. You know, mm-hmm. you, you can't go every third game when you get a starter to go, you know, five, six, seven in. And so they need some consistency in the front end. They got offense for days. We know what Ellie can do. We know what some of the other offense can do. I love where your eyes are, Cam, here is I'm a buyer on the Reds, definitely, for the second half, Cam. 
Jeff, let's switch over to the American League Central, and I think that's a very interesting division. The way the Cleveland Guardians got started, they were the hottest team yep. out of the gate in all of Major League Baseball, surprised everybody. I personally have a division bet on the Minnesota Twins to win the American League Central. It's not looking so good right now. Do I have a shot? I mean, the Twins have been on a nice little run as of late. They came out of the gate slow. And can Cleveland sustain this run? Are they going to be this hot through the entire long haul of the season? Do you see them coming out on top in that division? Or like I say, does my ticket on Minnesota still have a shot? Everyone I talk to, Brady, loves the Twins here. They love the Twins to catch the Guardians. Um, I'm the biggest Tito Francona fan in the world. He retires. I'm like, the Guardians are done. I, you know, they got J-Ram and a cloud of dust. Well, they just beat you by 10,000 paper cuts. It's the old school baseball. They get guys on base and they actually, you know, move runners base to base and then they'll get the, you know, three run homer by Naylor or J Rim. Their front pit, mm-hmm. their front line starters have held up. I don't think I like where your eyes are. And I'm going to take it a step further. Cam was talking about the Kansas City Royals. Gil Alexander, a good, good friend of all of us, has the uh, Kansas City Royals as the team to beat in July for the most wins. He had Mm. the Astros last month. He loves the Royals here. So I'm going to say the same thing here. I like the Twins and the Royals to make the move in that division in the second half. And I like the Guardian, like the Phillies, to come back to earth in that division as well. Jeff, it's been a pleasure, buddy, having you on. Thanks for taking the extra time. And you got to come back again and tell me about the Blue Jays because I'm sick. These guys are making me sick. I feel sicker than that two-foot dog that I ate the other day and almost threw up. This team really pisses me off. Happy Fourth of July, buddy. Have a good one. Sorry, Brady. I had to put that in. Later, man. I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. It was nice to at least walk down the last few holes, or at least the last hole, knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody, and and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, It was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you you can do it again. Um, So I'm I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. Welcome back, everybody, in game life. He's for Boston, right? They're uh, Brady, so I'm like, yeah, he's like, oh, yeah. what about the Bruins? I'm like, yeah, they Kate still, Kott. at least they still win a championship. The the Red Sox are doing better than, and Boston wins the championship. I'm like, yeah, let, let's not cry for Come Boston on, fans down, too Boston. much, right? Exactly. I mean, didn't the Celtics just yeah. win it? It wasn't that long yeah. ago. They had that guy named Tom Brady. Come on now, yeah. Jeff. 
I agree. I'm just like, the Toronto's got a real problem, Brady. Like, we're, that's, it's real. And that's what I like about Tommy, our producer. Shout out, Tommy. Happy 4th of July. Like, Tommy likes the Buffalo Sabres. San Diego okay, Padres that's, are doing that's pretty tough. well. Sacramento Kings. Like, that's a man I can respect wow. because all my teams suck and all Tommy's teams suck. Does he like the, the San Jose play. Sharks, too? That's painful stuff. <laughs> it is painful stuff. Brady, I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, do we have any chance in this golf? Uh, as you see, before we hit the top of the hour, Valimaki, well, you know what we've got? Anybody? You've, what you've, we got? You've here? actually got two guys that have a chance to match that 59. Sammy Valamaki and Davis Thompson. Thompson. Uh, I know you're on Thompson. I don't know if you're on him for an outright. I know you're on Thompson, uh, maybe a finish position bet mm -hmm. uh, this week. I was, of course, on him last week when he came in, came in second. Um, I stayed away from him this week. But those two guys, seven under through 13 holes, they birdie their way on out, and that would be the magical 12 under or 59 to tie Hayden Springer. There's a couple other guys, too. <clears throat> There's not enough holes, but I'm on Eric Cole, first-round leader. He's T7, six under right now through 13. Chandler Phillips, a really nice start. You're right. I'm looking right now. Thompson's on fire, Brady. Seven under through 13. And let's remember, too, Hayden Springer chipped in for Eagle on, on the 17th hole, right? He just went bananas at the end. He went birdie on 15, par eagle, and then birdie. So to be four under in his last four holes there, he did pretty well to go from minus eight to minus 12. Anything is possible in golf right now. But I think tomorrow, you're right. Like, I think we need to talk to each other and figure out how we're going to attack this. And I don't want to do this to the kid because he seems nice, but Springer in a matchup bet or whatever, like, when you shoot around like this, me and Brian, the late Brian Blessing, God rest his soul, we always talk about it is, it's so hard to back up a special round, especially if you're not a player with any, like, you know what I mean, pedigree or anything. He seems like a really nice kid, kind of a ginger like me, but it is so hard to do, Brady. But after a round like this, sleeping on a lead and, and, and with tough conditions tomorrow, I think that's going to be very difficult for him tomorrow for Springer. I, I totally agree with you. I, I mean, this is this is a place he's never been before in his professional career. First of all, shooting 59. I mean, he joins a very exclusive club. Second of all, to be the overnight leader in a golf tournament, probably for the first time in his life, I'm guessing. There's a lot of new territory here for Hayden Springer that he is unfamiliar with. So, yeah, I would absolutely want to go against him in round two. Another guy I'd probably be looking to go against in a head-to-head -head matchup cam would be Kevin Chappell. I mean, this guy's got to be in his 40s now, I would guess. I mean, he, yep. 38, late 30s, early 40s. He's getting up there. He's been around forever, and he really hasn't been a relevant factor on the tour for what seems like almost 10 years. It's been a while before Kev, or since Kevin Chappell. You know, he was a guy a while back where, yeah, you know, he was worth a bet here and there. But, boy, I haven't bet anything on Kevin Chappell, I would say, in at least half a dozen years. And he comes out and shoots seven under. That's certainly, uh, you know, a, a mark for him that nobody really expected. So he's probably another guy that I would want to go against following up. You know, when he went solo one day, it, it's the same principle. Y you go to one end of the spectrum one day, you're liable to come back towards the mean the next. And shout out to you, Brady. You talked about the BMW Championship and our, our, our could, uh, not, like, just saying respect to Bernard Longer. Again, this could be his final tournament actually playing before Total on the Senior Tour. They did a big thing on the Golf Channel. And you want to talk about one of the best players in the world. And he shot under par in like an event at, what is he, 66? So unbelievable stuff, the way he's kept in shape. And in my opinion, probably one of the most underrated golfers and always a legend at the Masters. When he was old, he was just like right there. Like this guy's a real special dude. And uh, shout out to him. Uh, he's only like, you know, a few shots off the leader. And he's done a great job. He's an amazing well, human being. He, he, you, you said it, a, a truly amazing athlete, amazing human being has to go down as one of the greatest golfers of all time that nobody talks about. Won the Masters twice, made the cut there one time and actually contended not that long ago in the last 10 mm -hmm. years in his 50s, early 60s, something like that. Let's also remember this guy is like six months removed from a, from a torn Achilles surgery. Good call. And here he is contending again. He, he's unbelievable. And, and continues to do it. Yeah, you talk about the BMW International over there in Germany. Twenty-nine guys within three shots of the lead. You got a you got a barn burner going over there with Patrick That's, Reed one shot off the lead. 
Guys, under that's one thing about Patrick Reed. When he's there and in the mix, you got to watch out for Patrick Reed. Hour one in the books right now. We'll start hour two in game live, July 4th edition, after a short break, everybody. trying to hold it in right now um the support's been overwhelming tickets for nashville this week are nearly sold out we are calling this the bryson effect <laughs> i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um what we're trying to do for for nashville and places all across the globe so super excited for the, the future of live at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody. And, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. Welcome back, everybody, in Game Live, 4th of July. I'm Cam Stewart, along with my buddy Brady Cannon, watching the golf right now. And for everybody who missed it earlier, Hayden Springer, uh, he shot a 59 today at the John Deere. We talked about going low, and he went real low. Kind of an interesting leaderboard. And a couple guys, Sammy Valamaki, the Finn is minus 7 through 14. But it looks like if you have a Hayden Springer ticket, then probably, Brady, I'm predicting maybe one out there. Do you think, like, honestly, I'd like to know things like this. And you're in Vegas. Like, how many first-round leader tickets would anybody bet this guy? Like, would you like? I, I can't imagine there. There is a single one, and, and one you know, here here in Las Vegas, unless it's a relative or something, you know. Yes. Oh, we got to bet on Hayden again. Uh, yeah. But here in Las Vegas, we actually do not have that many first round leader markets. To be to be honest Crazy. with you, um, at, at Caesars, William Hill, they have it. But you know what? You know what's so bad? I, I was looking at it last night because I knew you and I were doing the show, and we wanted to have some first round leader action to talk about. And so I looked at the my Caesars William Hill account. Ties are a loss. It, it, you know, I, I mean, not not That's a not a dead heat, not a chop. It's a loss, which is ridiculous. I mean, how would you? Why would you ever bet that? Uh, and, and maybe they give you a little bit better num number, but. Not, Nothing not worth sacrificing a tie being a loss. So I just threw that out the window immediately. Uh, BetMGM has it, and that's where I did take a few shots with Justin Lower and JT Poston and Michael Kim and uh, Jacob Bridgman, none of which are going to shoot 59 today. Um, but, you know, the, the Westgate Superbook does not have for sometimes they, for the majors, they might have first round leader. Uh, Circa Sports does not have a uh, first round leader. Uh, and, and of course, we don't have DraftKings and FanDuel here in Nevada, so we don't have that many options for first-round leaders. So here in Vegas, I, I gotta believe no one was on Hayden Springer, and that could be true nationally. I gotta be honest with you, Brady. Like, great point that you bring up. I don't care what kind of odds if you're making a guy from 120 to 160. If a tie loses, 
That's insane to me. It's like when I Awful. went to the casino, I remember it's back It's not even fair, and, you know? No, no, it's, it's ridiculous. I remember I went to this charity casino. I didn't know. I sit there with 20, and I'm like, push. He goes, no, uh, it's a loss. It's a char- I, go, I go, excuse me, sir? He goes, uh, yeah. I go, I'm, I'm out of here. Like, I, 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 I don't care what the hell is going on. Like, this is some guy. Like, I was going to absolutely blow my gasket. It's like, yeah, so I got a 20, you got a 20, and I lose? Like, it's hard enough to win a bet. I don't mind if they saw it off. And right. another thing, Brady, I think it's really important to tell people because I know a lot of the listeners and viewers are getting into golf betting here on Sports Grid. Tw- you got to do like top twenty, including ties and stuff. You get burned oh, like yeah. that. How many? Oh, yeah. How many times have you had that one too? Right? Like it's one of those situations. I learned the hard way, and you never want to because let's call it out for what it is. There's 160 plus guys in a tournament. There's going to be a lot of guys minus eight, minus eight, minus eight. You know what I sure. mean? I don't care if they saw it off, but you got to have the bets with the ties in there. And I don't care if it's less money because you'll get burned hard. You know, this same book, William Hill Caesars, uh, in their head-to-head matchups, a tie is a loss, which is also ridiculous. You know, I mean, (laughs) I know, I understand it's not a win, but it's not a loss either. It should be a push and a refund. And I just don't understand. Like you said, they're already at an advantage. You know, the last time I checked, 11 is more than 10. And, uh, you know, now they just want to pile on uh, on that advantage that they already have. So, no, they don't take uh, any of my money in the first round leader market or, or the head to head matchup market because it's, it's just not a fair shake when a tie loses. So I, I stayed away from that. I, I do have Daniel Berger uh, in that account at 70 to one. And he's off nice. to a decent start today. I, I think the number and you and I talked about it, Cam, even if you're at two or three under today. You can back that up with a, a, a four or five or six under tomorrow and be right in the thick of this thing because the wind is supposed to pick up in Silvis, Illinois. That's where TPC Deer Run is for the John Deere Classic. The wind is supposed to get anywhere from 10 to 20 to 25 miles an hour on Friday. So these guys that are going nuts today, not everybody's going to be able to go nuts on Friday. And, and you should be able to make up a lot of ground on the field if you can just shoot four or five under. So, you know, I, I'm not going to say, you know, just throw, tear your ticket up if your guy shot two or three or four under today, because there's a lot of golf left here. Daniel Berger is one of those guys. And if he, you know, he's also a guy that kind of, you know, he's that ball striker. He's got that, that swing motion where he tends to mm-hmm. hit a lower ball. I think he's a good wind player, played at Florida State, know how, knows how to play in the wind in Florida. So he could be a guy that, you know, maybe he's a guy that gets lucky on Friday and is able to post a number in that wind, and he's right back in this thing. Excellent call by you, Brady. Where did he succeed or whatever? Remember losing in a playoff, Valspar, wind, to Padraig Harrington, the Florida swing yeah, with Berger. Right. That's what he is. Low ball flight. Honda Classic. Really, he was huge yes, at the Honda, Honda. Honda Classic. Exactly. Honda Classic, Balsbar, all that stuff. That's where Berger is. And it, and we're going to get conditions. Like, that's the thing. If the wind picks up, I know it's easy right now. That's a great call by you. So I think Daniel Berger will look at the markets before the end of the show, see if we can find like a, uh, a three ball or a match 18 hole matchup bet. And I think Berger could be absolutely live tomorrow. Uh, Brady, let's go through the baseball right now. I, you're my good luck charm so far. I don't want to get crazy, but Oakland's up three to nothing right now. We're going into the top of the fourth against the Angels. Uh, Oakland is minus 700 now. I sure like them a hell of a lot better when I bet them at like, what, minus eight, 118. Angels plus 450, eight and a half is your total. Brady, I kind of like, just for everybody out there, I'm happy with my stance right now with Oakland in this game, but eight and a half? Yeah. What do you think about the total in this game? Any any vibes or whatever, just for people that want to get in on the mix and say, you know what, I want to bet some uh, in-game baseball right now. Well, you, you talk about this being the dumpster fire game of the day, yeah. Cam, and and you know that's a, a big reason why I don't know if I want any part of it. I mean, the Angels. What are the Angels going to do? I mean, first of yeah. all, they they might not score a run for two weeks. Second of all, the bullpen might give up a thousand runs in the next two hours. So. I don't know what to do with them. They're they're not a very good team. And and I think they're also on top of that very unpredictable. And Oakland, they're on a run here. They're going for a uh-huh. series sweep. All of a sudden they're full of life. I, I would be backing the A's to win this game at this point. Um, I, I think they're playing with confidence right now. You know, I mean, it, it looked like for a while that they were the worst team in the division. I'm not so sure if that's true anymore. And they're they're taking it out on the stepchild angels. So if I had to do anything in game and I know it's a big price, I don't, I don't want to lay that kind of money yeah. with a team. That's not that good either, but 
yeah, I, I, and, and maybe you lay a run line, it, it, you know, two and a half, one and a half. Maybe you can get a decent mm-hmm. price if you want to do that. I mean, if, if this gets to the fifth inning and Oakland is still shutting them out, I, I think the Angels just fold up and, and take Good their call. ball and go home. You know, so I, you, you could probably lay some, lay some wood here with a run line if, if this gets uh, any uglier for the Los Angeles Angels. The, the other one that's getting, you know, it's been an incredibly interesting series, Baltimore and Seattle. Baltimore now out to a 2 nothing lead, top Beautiful. of the fourth inning. Nobody on and one out. Yeah, you like that one too. Corbin Burns doing his thing, pitching a shutout. I got to be honest with you, Brady. I'm looking at this, so I'm happy with my stance right now. It's not enough for me to take Seattle. Burns is just mowing guys down, and Seattle at plus 320. It's a great number, but I'm happy where I stand with Baltimore. Happy where I stand, but two totals I'd be looking at. Great call by you. If Oakland goes up like four or five, nothing, the Angels just might tap out eight and a half yeah. right now to the under. I'm sold. Yeah. So you know what? We're going to do that here on this show. Small play because I just want to have some fun on the show, but we're doing really, really well so far in baseball. So give me the under eight and a half with Oakland and the A's live. And I actually have a vibe, Brady. I like the over six and a half. I know most of these Seattle games yep. go, I'm with you. you know, under. I'm with you. I, I, I'm looking at that number going, I wouldn't be surprised if Baltimore won, like, you know, put up five or six themselves in this game. So I'm going to take the over six and a half in Baltimore, Seattle, and the under eight and a half. And I'm on Oakland. They're up three nothing in Baltimore, two to nothing. What do you think, buddy? We're ready to roll? I, I- I, I, I love the the analysis. I like you piggyback in there because if the Angels struggle here for another inning or two, I, I think they're done. And with the Seattle and Baltimore, if the Mariners come up with two runs, we got a tie game. And, and then yep. you know what happens. We go to extras and, and we can put three runs on the board in a heartbeat. So, yeah, I, I, I like the way you're going with both of them, my friend. Well, Brady, it's been good. That 10 seconds later, we went from eight and a half to seven and a half in the Los Angeles Oakland game. And that's good news for the under eight and a half right now. Stick around. More in game live July 4th edition with Cannon and Stewart after the break. trying to hold it in right now um the support's been overwhelming tickets for nashville this week are nearly sold out we are calling this the bryson effect <laughs> i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um what we're trying to do for for nashville and places all across the globe so super excited for the, the future of live at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody. And, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. Welcome back, everybody. As we mentioned, Brady and I got some action going on. So good 
Hey, so far so good with the Oakland game. I know people are like, Cameron, you're betting on the Oakland A's, but I'll tell you something, betting on the Angels is a hell of a lot worse than betting on the Oakland A's these days. And we took the live under eight and a half. Oakland is up three to nothing in the top of the fourth. The Angels do have a runner on right now, and we just got a strikeout. So runner on on first with one out there. Baltimore and Seattle, two to nothing. Baltimore live, minus 500, total five and a half. Brady, I should have waited a little bit. See, I got good with the LA total, right? I got eight and a half under. And then I, I was looking at the six going, eh, and now it's five and a half. So sometimes I, you got to show the patience game, my friend. But, hey, if I can get three out of four games right, I'll be very, very happy tonight. And we'll roll that into the WNBA, CFL, and soccer action too. And my boy Eric Cole, I have first round leader, Brady, seven under, but running out of holes. Can't believe Springer's 12. I'm just, I can't get over well, this. Well, you know what? Hey, was eight the, or first, nine, round, like, the yes. first round leader bet is done. You know, but yeah. you also have Eric Cole for an outright. Yes, and I, do. Uh, I said on the show last night, that was one of your picks that that I really liked. You know, he he had a couple of moments last week at the Detroit Golf Club where where he was really I mean, Eric Cole seems to have that almost every week where he flashes on a he gets on a little run where he makes three or four birdies in a row. I mean, he can get hot like that. And uh, so he was a pick on your card this week. It caught my eye. Maybe I'll get involved with him in game i'll have to see uh you know where today where the dust settles after round one here at the john deere and, I, and i'll tell you what cam i'm probably yep. even going to wait until they're finished on friday i'm going to wait until the 36 hole mark because with the change in the weather tomorrow anything that happened today could be a 180 degree turn tomorrow so i'm probably going to wait for two days to pass before i do anything in game before we get, for, uh, you mentioned WNBA and CFL. Yep. We want to preview all that action. I know you're going to be in on, you know, Saskatchewan and the Argonauts. And we, we talked about the misery of being a mm -hmm. Toronto fan. You'll have to talk to me about the Argonauts if, if that's any better. But the only we, good we have team, to Brady. go over <laughs> the, 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 the American team. tradition. Yep. I, I know, you know, and, and you up there across the border up north, you guys pay attention to to the annual hot dog eating contest. Yes. We did not have Joey Chestnut. It was like Scotty Scheffler was not in the field this week, right? <laughs> Joey Chestnut was not Great around. Call. He We didn't have a minus 3,000 favorite. You had uh, Jeffrey Esper was the favorite at minus 120. James Webb was the second choice at 2-1. to one. And the Italian, the big eater from Italia, Patrick Bertolotti, Bertoletti, at 8-1. to one. Eight fifty-eight hot dogs, Cam. The underdog comes through in the eating contest out there at Coney Island. Went down at about 12 noon Eastern time this morning. Ends up that Esper and Webb actually come in second and third. Esper ate 53 hot dogs. Webb ate 52. But Patrick Bertoletti at 8 to 1. Nice cash there if you were in on the eating contest earlier today. Great call by you, Brady. Another thing here on the grid, like do we have anybody like in the – like the regurgitate, the eating tour, like that could give us like, you know, uh, this <laughs> guy's our hot, expert for this you know, type of yeah, thing. Yeah, first right? round leader, uh, first race to 10, like in hot dogs, first race to 20 outrights. Like, yeah, where's our guy in the, Na where's our Nathan's guy? Because I didn't know anything about Bertoletti. Like, uh, honest to God, eight to one, that's a really nice price for the, for like, I, I like, I don't know. Like, yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, I wish we had a guy, I wish Tommy told me or somebody told me, hell, if somebody, guys, at Sports Grid, we bet on everything. So if you have a guy that, like, if you knew Bertoletti was, like, a smooth underdog in this contest, you should have told me and Brady because I wanted to bet on it. But it was weird without Joey. You know, Chester. I think our guy, uh, I, I saw yeah. on social media earlier today, I, our, our boy, another fellow Italian, Lou Finicaro, he might have been yeah. on Bertoletti. And you know how Lou loves an underdog. Yeah. Uh, he might have been on him at 8-1. to one. But look, I looked up some of these facts about these guys because without Chestnut in the field, these are all mm -hmm. new names. And, and by the way, the, the woman, uh, Mickey Sudo, defended her title. She won with She's 51 great. hot dogs. And, and I believe no uh, woman in the past had ever gotten past uh, eating 50 hot dogs. So Mickey Sudo defends her crown there, ate 51 hot dogs. But this guy, Esper, who was the favorite this year, uh, some of his accomplishments in the world of game in, in competitive eating, 83 slices of pizza in 10 minutes. Think about oh, that. God. 83 slices of pizza, right. 281 chicken wings in 12 minutes, 281. Oh, I did. Come on, Brady. Damn, now you contest. just ate something recently. Tell us about yes. this. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, but I don't know if we have enough time there, but I got a call from a Canadian sports <laughs> book and I do some NFL videos for them. 
and they're like the Blue Jays at the Sky Dome restaurant there, the Sportsnet Grill, it's called, right overlooking, uh, you know, where the Blue Jays play. They have this new foot, two foot dog. It's like 40 something bucks. And they're like, you get seven minutes to eat it. So they put this plastic hot dog hat on me. I think it's out on video now. I'll retweet it for everybody out there, but it's got like 19,000 hits anyway. So I did, I thought I was just going to try it, but they brought in like another guy versus me or whatever. And my doctor told me don't do these things anymore. Cause I used to go in chicken weaning contests at bars. And I remember once I had one at six o'clock in the morning, Brady, I ate 87 wings, but you try to eat 87 wow. wings in, in, in like 10 minutes. And, and, and they were huge ones too in the morning. Like you, you're supposed to be eating like Rice Krispies or Total or, or, or Weetabix in the morning, not chicken wings that are cold from the night before the bar because no bars open Let at 6 o'clock. Let alone 83 of them. It was disgusting, right? So <laughs> anyway, I'll tell you more about this hot dog. But, hey, they tricked me because it was a two-foot dog. I'm like, that's the easy part. But it's loaded with bacon bits, chipotle mayo. Oh. They infuse it with some other, like, nasty cheeses. Didn't you tell the me the bun was extra thick, too? Oh, it was a trick. So I'm like, okay, I look at the thing and I go, it's not a bun. These guys are doing the, the thing in the water. It was a baguette. And I go, I, what, I go what the wow. hell? So I would try to, it was disgusting. I'm, I'm putting the baguette in the water, trying to get it down. I'm like, it's too thick. Like if it was a wonder bun or a, uh, what are those ones from Hawaii there that Peyton Manning talks about? Kings Hawaiian, like uh, something yes, soft. Yes, yes. Yeah, something soft. Right, I could have right. dipped it and gone, blah, 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 and just gone nuts, right? So I'm dip, dipping baguettes. The thing weighs five pounds. I almost got through it, Brady. Yeah, I beat this kid. But anyway, my doctor told me don't do stuff like that. But they did pay me. So, but I will say it was seven minutes to eat like that, a two foot dog loaded. And I literally just had like a little bit of bread left. I almost did it. But my girlfriend walked in and I didn't want to puke in front of her. But I did win the contest. You'd be proud of me. <laughs> give, me give me the old sports bread, Barry Horowitz. I used to go in eating contests all the time until my colon said don't. And my doctor said, uh, it's a one-way ticket hey, to diabetes. Did you so ever think, you know, you were going to get to host a show on 4th of July with two contest winners, Cam Stewart and Brady yeah. Cannon? You got to love it, my friend. Congratulations. Yeah, right, buddy. Thank you, Brady. Yeah, I beat down that kid hard. You didn't know he was messing with me. trying to hold it in right now um the support's been overwhelming tickets for nashville this week are nearly sold out we are calling this the bryson effect <laughs> i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um what we're trying to do for for nashville and places all across the globe so super excited for the, the future of live at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe but um, very proud of everybody and, and of course Tiro. I mean what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did.
Welcome back to the show, everybody. A couple games on the go right now. Oakland up on the Angels, three to nothing. Welcome to In Game Live. I'm Cam Stewart with Brady Cannon, having a lot of fun. My boy Tommy Reynolds, shout out to the crew too, who's working on their Fourth of July. Hopefully, you guys can get out and party a little bit later after the show. But Brady, it's interesting. We got uh, Baltimore up two to nothing, and we have that live over, and they got runners on second and a third here. Maybe we can explode and get the over in this game too, and that'd be real good uh, for our bankroll heading into things later on tonight. Yeah, a key two-out hit here by the Baltimore Orioles would be huge. Top of the Mm -hmm. fifth inning, basically halfway through the game right now, if you could get that third run across, you'd really be sitting pretty. You just worry if those Mariners' bats are ever going to wake up. You know, when it was just a two, well, it is still a two-run deficit. You think they've got a good chance to tie that. If Baltimore starts, you know, running away with this, I mean, you could get really burned here and end up with, you know, a five to one final or something like that. So it's kind of got to go one way or the other. Baltimore's either got to absolutely open it up or Seattle has to keep it tight. And I think you're really getting closer by every, with every uh, pitch that goes by here in Oakland, you've gone to the top of the fifth inning now still shutting out the LA angels. So that under really getting stronger by the minute there, the under eight and a half you took in game live with the uh, Angels and the A's. Great call by you, Brady, too. For people that missed uh, uh, the segment before with Jeff Dawson, we got other games coming up. I think all of us are in agreement. The the Giants tonight might be a live dog tonight. That's at 720 Eastern, 420 Pacific. I kind of like the wow. other side, Cam. Oh, you I like the Braves like the other Morton? Side. Okay. Yeah, now, I mean, it, it would, Jeff, I thought Jeff described it well. He He felt, I mean, the Giants are a pesky team. I know I've been a fan for them, you know, since birth. Um, And Logan Webb obviously is their ace. The the Braves, I think, are pretty clearly the better baseball team. Mm -hmm. And I like to bet against Charlie Morton on the road, and I like to bet on him at home. So here you have the better baseball team at home with a guy that's good at home off of a really good start and you're in basically a pick em ball game because the opponent is dealing their ace. And, and Jeff agreed with me that the value is probably here on Atlanta. But b- besides that, he, he did like the Giants side. And, and I, I get it. You know, they, they are a scrappy, pesky team. But I've been familiar with the Giants enough for so many years other than their three world championships. I mean, you know, they're, they're, when they first won their World Series, their, their theme was torture. They, they are, you talk about Toronto teams being tortured. Yeah. So were the San Francisco Giants for many years. And, you know, they're on a little bit of a run right now, playing pretty decent baseball, but they're going to lose, they're bound to lose five in a row in, in a moment's notice. So I just don't have a lot of faith in this team. And I think it's a good situation for Atlanta. But like the odds are telling us, it's probably pretty much of a toss up game here. The best was Brady when we went down there for the NFL draft. So, I told Morency, I'm like, listen, man, let's have a couple drinks and go hit the felt because I love blackjack. That's my game, right? And we're sitting there. Everything's everything's going great. And this guy sits down at the table. And Morency's wearing his Dodgers gear, of course, right? The guy's yeah. like, what the hell? He's like, hey, you're like, you a Dodger fan? He's like, yeah, I don't know. What, 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 what's the problem here? It's like, yeah, I'm Logan Webb's brother. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're sitting there at the blackjack table. And, dude, when Logan Webb's brother came, me and Gabe were like, doing pretty good this guy sat down it was like a it was like dodger giant it was like dark cloud i'm like oh my god the like, cooler this guy come here yeah oh he's straight up cooler wasn't his fault too but you know that extra guy at the table and then we all start to lose he's like, oh yeah buddy i like your do- <laughs> giants love your dodgers apparel and stuff and rents he's like ah oh, this guy yeah it was just it was I'm like just, just why us we were just doing don't you hate that brady too like i play blackjack a lot and it's so good when you have like a family table and i'll i've learned one thing quickly before the break you know what i like to play with older people i like to play with like okay. old ladies who wake up in the morning not drunk or whatever and good players like not like some like fly by nighter they get it because they've been playing cards for like 40 50 years yeah. every time i sit beside a senior citizen like a lady who looks sharp with good jewelry i'm like i'm on the right spot that's just me i don't like playing with somebody that doesn't at least know how you're supposed to play you know play exactly. by the book okay yeah i it, you get somebody that's you know i i got to I, I got a gut feeling that I should hit on this 16. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Please, Dude, I play spare with guy. me. I'm He's trying not 20s. to lose money here, pal. I, I go, if you want to split 20s, that's fine, bro. Yeah, but not when go. everyone's oh. at the table. Like, I, I, I never, like, I never yell or tell people, but I go, that's just stupid. 
20s are winning you hands. You got to play by hand. yourself. Don't mess it up. Yeah, no, that's the thing. If you want to be be by yourself and do that, but you're taking down the Titanic with you, and we're like, we're out of here with this guy. But that's the problem. People don't understand. It's a team game. But if you play selfish, everyone's going to lose. More picks on the other yep. side with Brady. We got WNBA, baseball, CFL, soccer, everything. In game live. In -game. trying to hold it in right now um the support's been overwhelming tickets for nashville this week are nearly sold out we are calling this the bryson effect <laughs> i mean with how much support we have out here and it's just the start that's that's a testament to what live golf is and what the crushers are doing what uh, our team's doing and um what we're trying to do for for nashville and places all across the globe so super excited for the, the future of live it was nice to at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done it's never safe but um, very proud of everybody and, and of course Tiro I mean what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did. Welcome back, everybody. Cam Stewart, Brady Cannon, 4th of July Special Edition in Game Live. Thank you for all of our guests for coming on the show right now. And, Brady, we're having a good time here. We got some afternoon baseball. We're still watching the golf. We know we're done with the first-round leader. But a lot of our guys who we've taken are doing quite well and lingering around the top of the leaderboard. Baseball update for everybody. It's still 3 nothing in Oakland. Oakland laying 3.5 plus 112. Uh, they're minus 1,400 on the money line. Total 6.5. And, and we're under the 8.5. Live there, Baltimore and Seattle. Brady, you call this one. Now my, my total's where it was before. It's six and a half, two to one. The Mariners just put one on the board. Live line, Baltimore down to minus 165. Seattle plus 130. Total six and a half. Any other opinions? I did have that over in the Baltimore game. Maybe some more runs. Well, I really like the under in the A's and the Angels game. It gets better by the minute here. The Angels do have a runner at first in the top of the fifth inning, but you've got two down. So I think you're pretty safe there that we're going to get to the bottom of the fifth inning with the A's continuing to pitch a shutout. And that just gives more and more value to your total under eight and a half runs there. The live bet that you placed uh, about an inning and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, Baltimore did not. They were not able to play to run when they had a little bit of a threat going there in the top of the fifth. And the Mariners come right back with a run of their own in the bottom of the fifth. So they've cut the lead in half. We said all along. If they can just tie it, two two runs is not insurmountable, even for an anemic offense like Seattle. They've cut that lead in half. They've got a runner on first with nobody out in the bottom of the fifth. If they can even, I mean, God, if they could get the lead here, I know you've got Baltimore on the side mm -hmm. as well. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if they went up three to two. Then you're in a really good spot to go over that total of six and a half. But ideally, you'd love to see them tie it up here in the bottom of the fifth inning. 
That's a good call, Brady. We'll get to the rest of the baseball later. We got some other games uh, starting at 721. Brady and I might be on opposite sides. We've agreed on a lot of things today, but he's leaning Atlanta, and I'm leading towards his San Francisco Giants. And we got Colorado hosting Milwaukee. We got Kansas City and Tampa Bay in the late night special. Uh, Arizona and Dodgers, best game of the night, 11, 9 11 Eastern, 6 11 Pacific time. We'll go through all those picks, but Brady. Let's talk about one standalone game tonight. It's the Canadian Football League. It's Thursday, 4th of July, but we have a Canadian CFL game tonight, and it should be a really, really good one. Undefeated Saskatchewan taking on the defending, oh, not the Montreal's defending a great cup chance, but the Toronto Argonauts won two years ago, but a very, very good football team. These guys have lost a lot of players, but they keep on grinding. This is a very, very weird game tonight and an interesting game. Uh, Ouellette. The running back who used to start for the Argos is now Saskatchewan's running back. So there's a lot of not love loss between these teams. The Riders have great home field advantage here, but they have a backup quarterback, and Gabe talked about it yesterday. Uh, Shea Patterson, remember from Ole Miss, he was a great quarterback in the SEC. Then he went to Michigan, not played as much, but he's kind of a guy that, you know, bounced around in a lot of leagues, but he's Saskatchewan's quarterback in Toronto. They've already lost, remember, uh, Kelly, Jim Kelly's nephew, and they got uh, Cameron Dukes, who's actually played really, really well for Toronto this year. And Saskatchewan, uh, Brady, they're getting four and a half. Argos laying minus four and a half total, 47 and a half. That's down from 48 and a half. Uh, Toronto Argonauts on the money line, minus 225 and plus 184. Saskatchewan, very, very good home team, very good receivers. And now Toronto has to go out to Saskatchewan, laying four and a half points. I've heard a lot of different opinions on this game, game Brady. And I'll tell you, me and Gabe are talking about it. I think the Riders might be live at plus four and a half. And we don't advise teasers all the time, but these teasers in the CFL have been middling left, right, and center. If you wanted to do one with Saskatchewan, because there's no key numbers, so we usually do the seven. We don't mind the juice. You can get Saskatchewan plus 11 and a half and over 40 and a half. There should be enough points in that game. Even, even might be 54 and a half under, but Brady... This We could have a live dog here. It depends on the backup quarterback situation. But I think the game plan for Saskatchewan will be run roulette, try to you know get the chains moving, a lot of dinking and dunking, and set up plays. Saskatchewan does have good receivers. And getting four and a half at home with crazy fans, that's good for me. I look for the home dog. Dogs can be barking in the Canadian Football League. Well, Cam, I, I will certainly lean on you here for uh, any CFL betting angles because I am not an expert in, in this league at all. But I did do some research on this game, nice. and, and I really like everything you're saying there. I think you do have a very good contest coming up. In fact, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, not only undefeated, they are 3-0 and straight up and against the spread this season. Now, Trevor Harris, you mentioned their starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. He is out, and that's why there's been a lot of line movement in this game, and I think most of all because of the absence of Harris. You mentioned Shea Patterson taking over at quarterback there. The Rough Riders were just a very short home dog before he mm -hmm. was announced that he was not going to play here. Now, all of a sudden, they're a pretty sizable home dog. Um, Toronto, they were held to just 20 points last week, but they played, as you know, a very good defense in the Alouettes uh, yeah. against, against a very good team last week. Now, Saskatchewan, that is really their weakness. They have no defense. So, I, I like where you're going there with the teaser and as far as the total, manipulating it to the over because I think points are going to be scored here. Even if you have Patterson at quarterback for Saskatchewan, I still think they can put some points on the board. And I think the Argonauts, you know, I think their team total in this game is like 24 and a half or so, 25. Mm -hmm. I think they go over that against this lousy defense for Saskatchewan. And if you want to tease the Rough Riders all the way to 11, 11 and a half or what have you, you take that total all the way down to 40. I mean, there's three bets right there for you. You, you tease the side and the total, and maybe you go over the team total on Toronto because I think Toronto will be able to, you know, maybe they won't be able to cover the four and a half, but I do believe they'll put some points on the board against this lousy Saskatchewan defense. Brady, uh, you say you're not knowing about the you, – you couldn't have said it any better. Uh, I agree. And here's the thing about Toronto, too. Their defense has been a little bit porous as well, and Saskatchewan's at home. I know you still have a backup quarterback, but there's an interesting matchup here, too. A.J. Ouellette was the star for the Toronto Argonauts and a huge part of them winning a great cup, and now he is the running back for Saskatchewan. He started off the season a little bit slow, but I could see them getting involved. And what do you do, Brady, when you have a backup quarterback? You want to lean on a veteran. You know what I'm saying? And a guy that knows this team, too. 
So I'm going to take Ouellette plus 140 anytime touchdown score for Saskatchewan. If they get close, they can't screw around with a backup quarterback. In the CFL, you usually take the backup and he scores, but they can't, you know what I mean? It's one of those situations where they're on their backup quarterback. You don't really want to go to the third stringer. They might just hand it to the running back and pound it because in the CFL, a lot of the time, you got to play one yard off the ball. So the starting quarterback goes out of the game. They have a specialized quarterback that takes in the carries at the one yard line or the two yard line and scores for Saskatchewan. You can't have any risk to a second stringer. I think they just might pound the fullback uh, from who used to be a start with the Ohio Bobcats. I think Ouellette plus 140 anytime touchdown score for Saskatchewan fits the bill tonight, buddy. I like it. And I'll tell you what, Cam, just uh, kind of looking at this landscape in general here, I think it's interesting when you consider that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders are 3-0 and straight up and against the spread. And against the spread is the key, you know, the, the optimum word there because they've been exceeding expectations, right? Mm -hmm. So now their quarterback goes down and they adjust the spread accordingly and betters are buying into that. Well, the, the market has not yet been able to adjust to Saskatchewan. They've covered the spread three consecutive times. Now that market has adjusted again because they've had a player fall to injury. I think they could be live maybe to win the game straight up because, again, the market, the bookmakers, whatever, they haven't been able to get the Rough Riders correct yet. And now you've adjusted this game yet again because of some changes in the lineup. I mean, they haven't been able to get it right yet. Who says they're going to get it right here? You know, Great call, and, Brady. And, and I think eventually, especially in the NFL, we know that market is, is so, so tight. As the season goes on, those numbers become especially solid. Well, this is only the fourth game of the season, and we've already had to make adjustments to a team so far that's perfect against the spread. Maybe the adjustment hasn't caught up yet. It's an excellent point. Gabe also talked about Saskatchewan as a potential money line candidate as well. I like the four and a half. I'm definitely going to take that. And that teaser was Saskatchewan to over 40, as you said. That looks absolutely juicy to me. And the teasers have I might be a Canadian, Canadian football, football fan league. tonight, Ken. Yes, that's right. Brady, you're not. You do to boot it. We're betting football and kids. Maybe more after the break. We'll get down the rest of the card. I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. at least walk down the last few holes or at least the last hole knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody. And, and of course, Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance the way he did. Uh, it was absolutely incredible, so I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, so I'm, I'm just proud of myself to, to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did.
Welcome back, everybody, in Game Live. So, Brady, me and Gabe made you an honorary Canadian right now. We don't have any uh, college <laughs> football yet, so no do to Buddha. We're gonna we're gonna play some Canadian football <laughs> from Mosaic in Saskatchewan tonight. And I do like the pick, Brady. I really like that teaser with Saskatchewan to the over. I think Saskatchewan four and a half plus four and a half looks pretty good to me. You talked about it. They've covered every game live. A, a money line, my money line might be something to look at too. It's a very very sweet price. You talked about it, undefeated and covering the spread. The CFL, it's kind of a weird league. A lot of dogs a lot of the time. And uh, I will say this, A.J. Ouellette, former Argo, playing for Saskatchewan. I see him getting into the end zone at plus 140 tonight. Brady, we'll go through some other games, too. Uh, I wish our boy McKinnis would be here. I know he's a big uh, football guy, too. Gabe will be betting on all these games. It's a lot of fun. And there's a huge game coming up. This one's the Friday nighter, guys. So everybody, after you're nursing your hangover from the 4th of July and you want another Canadian Football League game, if this one doesn't go well, you got Ottawa at Winnipeg and Brady let me tell you something Winnipeg this is probably the biggest story in the Canadian Football League these guys are perennial they were the New England Patriots like the New England Patriots in a nine-team league but every year just domination during the regular season sometimes some heartbreak in the Grey Cup but I would say the best team pound for pound year after year quality always going deep always winning the most games season win totals this year they're off to an 0-4 start They've had major mm. injuries. Dal Dalton's shown the receiver from Kansas State who's been one of the best bombers. He's been hurt. You got other guys. You know, uh, the quarterback, Zach Calera, Cincinnati Bearcat, partying with the Kelseys and Taylor Swift during Kansas City's run to the Super Bowl. So they've been a little bit slow this year at 0-4. But I will say this. Interesting, too, this line has gone down. Winnipeg now laying one and a half at home to Ottawa. Ottawa, a Jekyll and a Hyde football team. But... If Winnipeg's going to get it done, they have to get it done. I can't see this team starting 0-5. Maybe this is a sucker play, but they're a buck 40 on the money line. They're minus one and a half on the spread, and the total in this game might be a little bit light at 44 and a half. What do you got for this one, Brady? I like Winnipeg to get their first win of the year, but it's not going to be easy. Well, let me ask you this. I see the number there at one and a half, what, and I don't know what the opener was. Was it three? Two and a half. Two and a half. That's interesting. Okay. So if this was the NFL, then that tells you that the Sharks are obviously on the dog. Because when you have a number like two and a half in the NFL, that is such a key number. It And you, you'll know right away where the smart money is going. It's either going to go up to that key number of three and maybe even beyond, beyond to a three and a half, or it's going to stay at two and a half or go down. In this case, obviously, it's gone down. Now, I, I know the rules and the scoring is not exactly the same, but uh, that, that one's tough because it, it looks like the sediment here is clearly for the dog. I, I might look to the total in this one instead, Cam, or maybe even, you know, I think a good rule of thumb is if you have any liking for the dog at all, play the underdog in the first half. Or maybe in your case, if you like Winnipeg, Play Winnipeg in the first half because, you know, at 0-4, maybe they really are kind of the underdog in this matchup, right? And you said they're coming out to avoid an 0-5 start. Maybe they come out with a little piss and vinegar to begin this game and they put up a good performance in the first half, but maybe they're not all that this year and they cannot sustain the effort for the entire game and they end up going to 0-5. Maybe it's a safer bet to bet on that team for just half the contest, cut the game in half and see if you can get a, a pay the bills there, cash a ticket with Winnipeg. I get, I'm going to tell you, Brady, and it's it's tough because Ottawa is one of those teams. Sometimes they look good, sometimes they look horrible. They were exposed, but they were also exposed against Montreal, who's the best team, obviously in the CFL right now. They won 12 straight games, so uh, heading back to last year, they're just a juggernaut. They're on fire. Cody Bajardo, uh, the former Nevada Wolfpack quarterback for people in college, like he's just been absolutely brilliant with them this year but Winnipeg this is a thing they got great fans this is a tough like a tough spot for Ottawa revenge spot in the CFL Brady with only nine teams they played earlier this year Ottawa won by four in their home barn but I will say Winnipeg mm. I can't see these guys going to 0-5 Mike O'Shea is a good coach it's a little bit of a leap of faith and I'm going to take Winnipeg and we talk about touchdown scorers in the game it's interesting uh, Brady you know too Chris Strebler uh, who was back up in the National Football League, you know, in Arizona. He was very good in the uh, preseason with the Jets, but he's the, the quarterback now. He's one of those guys, not a great, accurate passer, but a very tough runner. 
I would not be surprised if he scored a touchdown. We don't want to lay minus 150. And Brady Oliveira, one of the best running backs uh, in the CFL, he was injured, but now coming back. So both of those guys are minus 150 to get a touchdown, but I would not be shocked. But it's one of those things I'm looking. Can both of them do it? You got to pick the right one. But I'm just going to take Winnipeg Brady, uh, minus one and a half money line. And uh, other than that, that total, it might be a little bit light. I think we can get over 44 and a half. But if Winnipeg goes to 0-5, even in the CFL, that's problematic for a team that was basically the best of the best. And now they're shocked. They got they got a lot of injuries. But Ottawa, asking them to win a game on the road, tough. So difficult game, but I think Winnipeg is in one of those spots. You know what it is, Brady? It's like when a team in the in the playoff series is down 3 to nothing, and everyone's like, oh, they're done. I like to take them when they're down. Like, yeah. you show a matter yeah. of pride, and then they lose the next right. game. Sure. Kind of like, you know, the Boston right. Celtics or whatever in the playoffs, right? Or even the Edmonton Oilers. Hell, they won three straight games before they lost game seven. And me and yes. you had Boston right. Florida parlay. Like, we're like, whoa, this is getting very, very interesting now. So, it, despite the injuries I think you make a good problems, point. It's just one of those things. They're at home, desperate. It's one of those things. I think just a professional football team like that will get over the hump. It's not going to be easy. I think they win the game by three or four, but... I'm going to take the Winnipeg uh, Blue Bombers in that spot. we got a couple other games, too. I know our boy Babano, he's going to be going to that game. we got uh, BC, Gabe's BC Lions and Babano's Hamilton Tiger Cats. That should be an interesting game. That one is probably going to be the best game. That's the last game of the week on Sunday. But on Saturday night, the hottest team in the league, the Montreal Alouettes, are playing the Calgary Stampeders, and the Alouettes are laying 9.5 in this spot, total 50.5. Brady, this one with Montreal's defense kind of leaning under. This is the one game I think it might be a little more defensive. Gabe was thinking Montreal blows these guys out. I'm not sure if if it's there hasn't been any letdown spots for Montreal and Calgary. A lot of these teams when they go to Montreal, Brady, it's one of those places where they like the clubs in Montreal and they like to party. So I don't know what Calgary is going to do. They could say all the right things, but. Teams tend to go to Montreal and light it up. It is 4th of July. They might be getting their party on there. But we'll break down the rest of the CFL. we got a pair in the WNBA, and we'll go through the live golf odds, too, at the end of the segment. And in the next hour, in-game live with Cannon and Stewart on 4th of July. I'm trying to hold it in right now. Um, the support's been overwhelming. Tickets for Nashville this week are nearly sold out. We are calling this the Bryson effect. <laughs> I mean, with how much support we have out here and it's just the start, that's that's a testament to what Live Golf is and what the Crushers are doing, what uh, our team's doing, and um, what we're trying to do for, for Nashville and places all across the globe. So super excited for the, the future of Live. So at least walk down the last few holes, or at least the last hole, knowing that it was pretty much done. It's never safe, but um, very proud of everybody, and, and of course Tiro. I mean, what a week to to get his first win in a few years and win by six in an absolutely dominant performance. The way he did, uh, it was absolutely incredible. So I couldn't be happier for him. Certainly with not winning for three and a half years, you kind of naturally question if you if you can do it again. Um, So I'm I'm just proud of myself to to be able to get through that and um, play the way I did.
Welcome back, everybody. Fourth of July special in game live here on Sports Grid. Hope everybody's having a great time. Good friends, good food, okay, good parties. And Brady, we're just watching the golf, we're watching the baseball, we're going through all the games. And I'm looking at the leaderboard with Cole, and he's set up for another birdie here. And I'm thinking, wow. I really wish Springer wasn't playing this week because I got him in yeah. our first round leader, but I do have him each way top five. So maybe Eric Cole can go birdie, birdie, and finish solo second and get me some cash here. But pretty good bets by us. It's just uh, day late, dollar short, it looks like. We didn't see this 59 coming out of here. But, man, Cole's off to a great start. And I have him outright in the tournament, too. So let's hope he can continue this pace. Yeah, we were going over our picks on Gabe's show last night, and Eric Cole was one on your card that really jumped out at me. And you know, I said, yeah, this guy has you know, had a couple of nice showings as of late. He got hot for a minute uh, last week at the Rocket Mortgage Classic, and I like that momentum going into this week. You know, he's definitely a birdie fest type of guy. He can rack up birdies in a hurry. I think it was last year when he went to that playoff at the Honda Classic with Chris Kirk. He was one of the Ooh. leaders on tour for birdie percentage. So he, he is a guy that can absolutely go low. He's going low here today. He's still got a couple holes left to play. Now, keep in mind, the 18th hole, the 18th hole and the ninth hole at TPC Deer Run are the two hardest holes on the golf course. A lot of guys, yeah. including Soon JM and JT Poston, made bogeys on those holes today. So, you know, this isn't a complete birdie fest in the sense that there aren't a couple of tough holes out there. But it looks like Eric Cole can finish at nine under. Sammy Valamaki now at nine under. He's playing that difficult 18th right now as we speak. But you're absolutely right. If it wasn't for Hayden Springer, of all people, I mean, out of yeah. left field, Hayden Springer, opens the golf tournament with a 59. Yeah, you'd be sitting there with Eric Cole, possibly. I mean, I, I remember the morning wave finished up. I did a first-round leader bet on JT Poston. You know, I thought if he could get to seven, I might have a shot. I'm not even close at this point. Brady, you know what the worst is, too? I have two sports books. I got them at, like, 20 bucks, so 1,000, 1,000. Two dimes going into to with Eric Cole would have been nice. Ah, now, now I'm actually getting wow. out. I was like, I'm happy for Springer. Now I'm like, just why this week, bro? But this is betting on golf. Brady will tell you, it could be the most lucrative, fun sport, or it could just absolutely drive you nuts. You can go from winning dimes to just sitting there. And when Scotty Scheffler's involved, uh, we, we usually bring out the hedgers. That's hedge, because we got to get <laughs> yes. something. Our guy's in second. We got to do something to get some money. But yeah, off to a crazy start this week. It's not going to play this easy tomorrow. Brady talked about it. He knows what he's talking about. 20, 25 mile an hour wins. They're not going to go this low tomorrow, but great start by Springer. Uh, Brady, we talked about uh, the end of the CFL game, and uh, the, the, the Montreal Alouettes are just taking this league by storm right now. They're laying nine and a half. I know a lot of people, I'm going to take Calgary, maybe with a little bit of a leap of faith, but I know I know Marenzi likes the Alouettes to murder these guys, and I could totally see his point of view. They've just been the hottest team, but I think 50 and a half is too many points. I really like that Alouettes D, and I think Calgary can step up. So I'm going to go with the under in this game. The next game on Sunday night, I might be I might be going to. I know Babano, Darsh, and a few of our Sports Grid listeners and viewers are going to Hamilton to watch this game. I hope I can make it out there. Gabe's BC Lions versus Babano's Hamilton Tiger Cats. BC laying five and a half on the road, total 53 and a half. Brady, I'll tell you this. From a, a man that plays a lot of CFL games, Hamilton has had a horrible, horrible start to the to the year. Bo Levi Mitchell is a great quarterback, but over the time, he's just been beat down and hit. And it's kind of like watching like an old quarterback at the end of his career. Remember like Drew Bledsoe just getting murdered? And it's really, really tough for him. But asking BC to go on the road into Hamilton, it's a very tough spot. A lot of these games have been close, and I could see a real tight game. I'm looking at the home dog getting five and a half. And Brady, if there's a game that we like to total over, 53 and a half, Hamilton has no defense. BC's defense can still be scored upon. Hamilton could put up points. I'm seeing like a 31 to 28 type of game here. So I like the dog and the over. I'm not sure what your notes tell you about this one, but I think uh, Hamilton is live and I could see a lot of points in this football game. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I mean, I, I don't think you ever want to lay points on the road just as a general rule of thumb. You're probably better off uh, taking the home dog. In the other game, Montreal laying the big number as well on the road, mm -hmm. correct? They're on the road as well? No, they're at home. They're, uh, they they're are at home, at home okay. against Calgary, yeah. Okay, all right. So I'm going to stay away from the side, but you talked to me about liking the underdog there and also liking the under. I would probably play the under. And if you like the under, 
then you certainly probably don't want to be laying nine and a half points. You know, if you think points are going to be at a premium, then you don't necessarily want to be taking a side where you have to win by a big margin like that. Yeah, I like three underdogs this week, Saskatchewan, uh, Calgary, and Hamilton. The only favorite beast, uh, Winnipeg, on the money line. We'll break it all down. Baseball update for you, WNBA. Hopefully some golf and tennis, too, people have been asking about in-game live. Continues.